income country and as the power energy sector matures the choice of market liberalization emerges on the other hand pricing regulation can be an effective tool to promote the uses of clean and renewable energy and ensure the sustainable future. Today, we are here to learn about the Bangladesh government's view on energy pricing regulation and their key considerations. Power and Energy Week 2018 looks forward to encourage youth empowerment and give rise to vibrant business that contribute to economic growth and broaden socioeconomic relations between other countries. It aims to elevate the industrial development and nature innovation that amplifies the strength of the government and also support in achieving the development targets of the country. Today we have our Honorable Chairman, Chairperson Abu Hena M.D. Rahmatul Mumin, Secretary Energy and Mineral Resources Division, Mr. Asan H. Mansur, Executive Director PRI, Mr. Zarif Munir, Partner and MD BCG, Mr. Mizanur Rahman, Member BERC, Abdul Mansur MD, Faizullah NDC, Chairman Petro Bangla, MD Akram Al Hussain, Chairman BPC, Mr. Khalid Mahmood, Chairman BPDB, Dr. M. Samsul Alam, Energy Advisor CAB, Dr. Jai Sri Rai, Professor Jadavur University. Now I would like to request our Honorable Chairperson Abu Hena MD Rahmatul Mumin to give his opening remarks. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. A very warm welcome to all of you to today's uh, seminar on energy pricing. Currently, the Bangladesh government offers large subsidies to the energy and power sector and thereby controls the market price. However, as the domestic energy uh, reserve depletes, such subsidy model may prove to be unsuitable and a new energy pricing model needs to be uh, considered. Today, we have invited a group of panel members from the whole uh, value chain of the power and energy industry to figure out the challenges with the current pricing policy and pricing model and key considerations when formulating the new energy pricing regulations. The agenda uh, for this session uh, is uh, as follows that Mr. Asan Mansur, former, uh, sorry, Asan Mansur from the Policy Research Institute of Bangladesh will deliver the keynote speech. And then we are privileged to have a group of industry experts to join the panel discussions. Mr. Jeffrey Munir from the Boston Consulting Group will uh, the moderator for the panel discussion. And our distinguished panel members uh, includes two experts from the oil and gas industry. They are Mr. Abul Mansur Mohammad Faizullah, Chairman of Petro Bangla, on my right. Then Mr. Akram Al Hussain, Chairman of Bangladesh Petroleum Corporation, on my left. One expert from the utilities, Mr. Khaled Mahmood, Chairman of Bangladesh Power Development Board. And Mr. Samsul Alam, Energy Advisor of CAB, will provide the input from consumers' perspectives. Uh, Mr. Mijanur Rahman, member of BREC, will uh, talk from an academic point of view. And finally, Dr. Jayasri Roy from Jaidapur University in India will give her view from a global perspective. Uh, now, I would like to invite Mr. Ahsan Mansur, Executive Director of the Policy Research Institute of Bangladesh, to give the keynote speech. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Let me, at the beginning, thank the organizers of this event for inviting me to make this presentation. We all know that energy is 
really the real factor behind today's economy. Without energy, we cannot survive. Even increasingly, it's becoming such. I remember in Washington, we didn't have power for one or two days. We had to leave our house and go to another city where there is electricity. So we are so dependent on electricity that life cannot continue without power, without energy. Even to go to the other city, we needed the fuel, which is energy. So energy is in every aspect of our life. And that's why pricing of energy is Okay, that's why pricing of energy is so important. But at the same time, we also know that energy pricing is the most contentious, most controversial, and most, I would say, in many cases, wrong in many countries. And, and that's the issue. There is a conflict of interest issue, there is a social justice issue, there is the growth and sustainability issue, and investment issue as well. So all this thing has to be addressed through one mechanism, and that's the pricing of energy. We know that energy has different dimensions. Liquid fuel, that means the, the petroleum that we use, and that has different categories of petroleum. There's an issue of cross-subsidization in that. Diesel is cheaper in Bangladesh, but diesel is more expensive in the US and Europe because of environmental and other considerations. We need to think about that. We know that there is a gas pricing issue. We intentionally, for the last 40 years, made gases very cheap because it's our domestic product. Is that a rational argument? In my view, absolutely wrong. If you look at United Arab Emirates, they export, there's the, one of the major global exporters of petroleum, but their petroleum prices are being increased adjusted with global prices every three months. Why? Because energy is a resource, and the, every resource has to be priced appropriately in a manner that... that so, there are different models. There are efficient models of pricing. There are intermediate efficient models of pricing. And there are very inefficient models of pricing. We have to choose politically and economically which model we would like to adapt for the pricing of energy products in Bangladesh. Now, we know that for various social reasons, political reasons, for example, petroleum prices across Bangladesh uniform. Fine. Is it very rational? We also know that petroleum prices are monopolized by the government agencies, which makes it difficult for private sector players to come and create efficiency for the consumers. So monopoly pricing in the public interest is fine. But the issue comes, is that the most efficient pricing? Is that the one which will give the best benefit to the consumers? Experience with other countries shows that that's not necessarily the case. Because consumers are going to bear the cost one way or another anyway. Either they will pay at the pump or they will pay out of taxes. There is no escape for the consumers or the taxpayers from the pricing policy. It's an illusion that I paid less here. Doesn't mean you paid less here. You are paying through your tax dollar or tax taka in another place. So consumers are paying no matter what. So in that case, shouldn't we go for the best and most efficient pricing policy and forget about the inefficiencies that's built into a monopoly pricing structure or monopoly delivery mechanism? So the issue comes regarding petroleum prices. There are two issues. One is adjusting the prices in line with the market 
global developments because it's an imported product, so we have to price it, otherwise we have to subsidize it. There's no other thing. Secondly, generating efficiency in the market so that the prices can come down through competition, through efficiency. How is that? Let the private sector also come in. I'm not saying that government should disappear. Government should stay. BPC can stay. But, the, but private players can come in. Let's look at telecommunication. 30 years back, when uh, Bangladesh Telephone Corporation, BTC, was the sole monopoly provider, we used to think that, well, government has to provide that. Now, who, who cares about BTC? Virtually very few government officials have the BTC cell. Everybody else has come in and others. So essentially, the market and the private sector, domestic, foreign, together can take over the role and deliver the services at an efficient prices, which will be in the best interest of the consumers and the industry and the business. So we have to keep that in mind. Now, come to the other area. Same thing with the gas prices. Here is, I understand that it's a, uh, domestic gas prices is a natural monopoly. But naturally, and the government could decide whichever way because it's a virtually a free gift for our nation. We have wasted tremendously by not pricing it properly. We are still wasting it in the household sector by not pricing it properly. And the result is that we cannot provide the services. And secondly, now we are running out of gas. We only have a few years of gas supplies left. What are you going to do? We have to import LNG, fine. But the prices are several fold of domestic prices. So we have to increase the prices. Of course, we have a slight advantage because we can wait them out. We can blend domestic gas with foreign imported gas and keep the prices reasonable. But looking forward 10 years down the line, when the domestic gases will almost disappear, we have to be imported dependent on the all imported LNG. In that case, we better have a mechanism for price adjustments to that level, which I'm sure the government is doing and doing the homework and will be announcing the prices very shortly. But please remember, this is only the beginning of a steep increase coming in the gas prices for Bangladesh. And that is not something that we can avoid it out. We cannot subsidize it out. We have to live with it. And that's the reality. Now, coming to the third element of energy pricing, where, again, the government is very much in, uh, involved, is the, gas, is, is, the, is, the, is, is, is the electricity pricing. We know that government has done a very good job in terms of improving supply of electricity, improve, uh, increasing the installed capacity, as shown in this table. It's a very impressive performance, no doubt. But it has also other dimension. And we know that other dimensions are that Bangladesh is facing a very critical energy, primary energy mix problem. That means we're running out of gas. We have to import gas. We have to use coal. We have to use other primary sources. We have to use uh, imported power. We have to find alternate generating places for renewable in Bangladesh and also in other countries like Nepal, Bhutan, or northern, northeastern India, or Myanmar, or wherever. So we have to have that base load production capacity at a reasonable price at the same time to keep the prices constant. The challenge is that at high price, anybody can supply electricity. Even the American producers will come rushing and generate it and give it to us. Issue is not that. Issue is that making electricity available at the right price, at the affordable price that the consumer industry and business can absorb and can pay for and remain competitive in the global market. That's the challenge. And we have to face that challenge. There are numerous problems with that. Let me tell you. Price increase is one solution, but it cannot be relied on as the only solution to that problem. We have already increased prices. In the chart, you can see, in the table, you can see that. Very steep increase. But are we out of the woods again? No. We are still very much in the thick of the forest. We have to, if we rely on price increases, 
we have to increase by another 100% or more, perhaps, to get out of that problem, and still may not be the solution there. And that increase is not politically, economically, the right way to go. So we have to generate, we have to keep the price increase in mind, for sure. There will be some price increases, but we have to keep our prices contained, increases contained. We have to make sure that industry is not uncompetitive because of the main engine of the industries is the power. So we have to focus on the power pricing in a rational way, which makes it competitive, our industry competitive. This chart shows that, yes, Bangladesh is still probably comparable or a little bit below in terms of tariff structure, as of now, compared with our, our neighboring countries. But that is not going to last very long. We have a long way to go in terms of price adjustments or in terms of addressing our energy, energy mix problem, and, and we have serious problems in that. I must admit that in comparing this table, I see that the prices in Bangladesh are much more rational in terms of different categories of consumers, which I think, from my economic point of view, the efficient way. Don't distort the pricing structure too much between users. Make it as flat as possible. And within the consumer category, you can allow some distortion, some, 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 some variations, like lifeline consumers, which is in the Bangladesh as well, which is fine, but don't make it too cheap. Because if you make it too cheap, it can lead to multiple metering and unnecessary costs. Because people would like to save uh, remain at, at below 100 or below 50 unit and, and show multiple use and so on. So we have to avoid incentive for people from, so that they don't do it. Now, the problem is that, why is that problem? Problem is that we still have huge subsidy bill that the government is paying. And this subsidy bill alone is not the, is not the, pro, uh, is not the only cost. There are also borrowing by the, by the institutions uh, like uh, Power Development, uh, BPC, or gas corporations. They are investing. Government is taking over the loans, foreign loans, foreign invest because of those investments is in foreign currency. So those things are happening as well. So subsidy is the direct one. There is an indirect economic subsidy, which is not measured, like the gas price. There is no measurable subsidy there, but it's there. It's the economic subsidy. And in addition, there are other subsidies which are like in the form of loans and, and grants, which are not captured in the, in the measured subsidy directly. Now, price pressures are going to intensify in the coming years. Why? Because, as I said, we have this energy pro uh, primary energy problem, which we have to solve, and we have to go to the more importing more LNG in future. We have to be importing more, uh, we have to be importing huge quantity of coal in future, and we have to move away from, uh, we, are, we are increasingly depending on liquid fuel-based power generation as of now, and we cannot continue that for long. The delay that has taken in commissioning the large-scale coal-based power plants is going to cost us. It's going to cost us in the coming five years, because no coal-based power plant is coming into operation before 2021, 2022, or even, even after. So how do you bridge that gap? There's huge price pressure coming up because of that. You can see this list shows that almost all new power plants are either gas-based, which we are running out, or liquid fuel-based. And that's not a solution in the long term for Bangladesh. We have to have the coal-based and others more dependable sources for future. You can see that how liquid fuel power, uh, consumption is increasing in Bangladesh very rapidly. And that is not sustainable for electricity pricing in the coming years. We have to move out of that, that pattern. Yeah. And the only way is the, is, the, is the mega projects, mega power projects coming, bringing them on stream as soon as possible. So, 
input mix will certainly add pressure on the tariff increase. That's one fact. Second is that there is a huge gap between industrial capacity and actual generation. It's important. Why? Because it's important to highlight the gap is not important. Gap is a problem. We are not using the industrial capacity to the extent we should be using it. And if this gap widens, it means that return on investment is not going to be adequate. So the consumers have to pay more and the power will become costly. So we have to address this widening gap through huge investment in transmission and distribution and ensuring there's a huge pent-up demand in, across Bangladesh for power. We cannot meet it. We are still in the villages. The load shedding is tremendous. I, I go there quite often and I find that every few hours there's a one or two hour of blackout. And, and it's hampering productivity, economic activity. So we need to make power available. The demand is there. That will help reduce the install capacity and actual generation gap and make power more affordable. So we have to look at it very, very carefully and ex invest in our generation capacity, extension, uh, sorry, extension of, of, of transmission and distribution system, development of that. Bangladesh also has some opportunities. We have to capitalize on those opportunities. We know that uh, some of those opportunities are from internal through efficiencies and some progress has been made in distribution and, and transmission losses reduction. Further reduction is planned and we hope that government will work on those to reduce the system loss to the minimum through metering systems and other, other, other ways and improve transmission distribution loss reduction. As well as Bangladesh has a huge, in its own neighborhood, huge potential for electricity generation, hydropower generation, and we need to work with our neighbors to work on that. The SARC framework agreement is already in place, which should be a conduit for enhanced um, power exchanges between these countries through regional power grid, which is yet to be established. In the BIMSTE conference of the head of states last week, the Prime Minister, our Prime Minister and other Prime Ministers also and head of governments endorsed the creation of a regional grid. That could also help us in getting cheaper power from regional countries at a much more affordable prices and use them for our uh, consumption, consumption needs. What I want to underscore again, aggressive pricing alone will not solve the problem. Pricing has to be part of the solution, but not the only part of the solution. So, what will be the government's strategy for that? As I already spelled out, the future energy mix has to change very significantly. The reliance on natural gas as specified and master plan for the energy sector 2016 should come down to about 30% or around that figure. Coal should be increased to at least 20% plus imported energy. Here, I think I will beg to differ with the master plan. Master plan says only 5% to be imported. I think we can do much more than that because it's much cheaper for our consumers to have that imported source. So, so to rebalance the energy uh, mix of electricity sources and cross-border trade can certainly play a role and it's being done widely in, in Europe, in North America, and Bangladesh has started. Just uh, two weeks ago, uh, the second interconnector is working in Bheramara, so that's a positive thing. But a number of other things should happen. What are the other things? I believe that India has developed, for example, a very nice private sector late energy trading system. Despite having huge government infrastructure, government role by state governments as well as the national government, Indian market mechanism is allowed to operate. And that's why big companies like Reliance, Adani and a lot of others are big players in the Indian electricity market and they can also play in the regional market. So what I'm trying to say is that Bangladesh needs to open up trade in electricity 
to the private sector. So that in addition to G2G, government to government, we have G2P, we have P2P, private to private, import of electricity. So what it means is that we have to deregulate the power sector. We have to allow the private sector to come in. We have to allow the private sector in the distribution system. We have to allow them to buy and sell to, the, to their customers at their negotiated competitive price. Buyers don't have to depend on PDB prices. It can be done. It is done in other countries. It can be done in Bangladesh. We have to think out of box. It's nothing out of box because many other countries are practicing it. We need to learn from that. We don't need to invent the wheel. We just have to do it. So finally, I will conclude with the following, that yes, power sector is one of the very good and strong performer in Bangladesh economy today and of the government. And Prime Minister is rightly proud of that. But that being said, the sector has serious structural issues, which will take time, several years to overcome, which will take political resolve to solve it, which will take conscious reform within the government system, which is, which is state control, distribution, generation, trade, all those. Within that, they have to do, uh, do that reform. And they have to involve the private sector. Right now, the private sector is only limited to generation, and I must admit, at a very, in terms of very sweet deals, we have to reduce the sweetness of those deals and make this more, much more competitive and affordable, and as well as bring, allow the private sector to operate in the other areas of electricity generation. Let me conclude with this observation. As we go through the highways in Bangladesh, we can see lots of big lorries with LPG gas being distributed by different private sector agencies. If they can do LPGs, they can certainly do petroleum. They can also do electricity. You have to trust and give the opportunity to the private sector. I can tell you, we don't have to depend on the monopoly of the government. And the government can get out of the subsidy carrying load in its budget in that process. It's a win-win for both private sector for the citizens and for the government in managing its budgetary resources. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Good morning. I hope you can all hear me. My name is Zarif, and I am the managing director and partner responsible for BCG's Southeast Asia operations. I've had the privilege of working with the power sector here, and we are delighted to see the attendance as well as the rich dialogue. Let me first start by thanking the organizers, the panelists, the keynote speakers. It has been a wonderful, wonderful demonstration of very rich dialogue. Over the course of the next 45 minutes, I will be asking the panel a set of questions that we have received from different members of the audience from different thinkers. After the question and answer session, we will open it up to the floor for a few questions. I will take the questions in total and then ask the panelists to respond individually. It is a pleasure to be here with you today, so let's get started. The very first question that comes after the wonderful speech you gave is how to find balance and balance between sustainability as well as affordability. Perhaps I could ask Dr. Yoashri Roy, to take that first question. Hello, everybody. Good morning. I think I need just one correction in my introduction. In my earlier incarnation, I was with Jadupur University in Calcutta in, in India. But right now, I'm the Bangabundhu Chair Professor at Asian Institute of Technology responsible for uh, developing the roadmap for Bangladesh uh, to meet the SDG 7. So now I take your question and to me, uh, also I'm part of the intergovernment panel on climate change 
uh, coordinating lead authors since AR4. I'm also one of the authors of 1.5 report. So uh, my understanding at the international level tells me that sustainability is a new paradigm, which rightly our keynote speaker said, we need to think differently than the monolithic structure of the traditional economic solutions. So what is this new paradigm which is telling us? So sustainable development actually tells us that, yes, we need to figure out the new policies and the strategies which help us to achieve three goals. One is economic growth, the social justice, and the environmental justice. So if we have to achieve these three goals, definitely we need new policies. And what does the scientist across the world coming up with? And the assessment, Intergovernment Panel on Climate Change Assessment, if you look into the AR5, report, and a 1.5 report is going to be published in October, then you can able to see that it is actually the sustainability gives us a chance to diversify the portfolio of technology. And when we are talking about energy, we need to keep in mind that we are talking about both primary energy and the secondary energy. Power is only secondary energy. And we have the whole vast uh, portfolio of primary energy. How do we transform that primary energy to secondary energy is a question. So is there only one primary energy which should dominate the secondary energy portfolio. So sustainability science says that what we really need is diversification of the technological portfolio as well as the secondary source portfolio. So from that point of view, what I mean to say is that we need to talk of energy system as a whole now. And in the energy system, very interestingly, in this whole new paradigm, in the whole new discourse, globally and many nation states are trying to implement them, is that they, there is no power generation sector, the large power generation sector is not the only solution. The households, the industries, agriculture sector become, through their waste generation, the bioenergy supplier. So the whole uh, primary energy base from hydro, coal, oil, gas is diversifying to a negative energy, a negative environmentally uh, uh, positive and negative carbon emission source. So from that point of view, actually, if we look into the energy system, if I'm a household, and if I have a roof rooftop in my uh, rooftop solar in my uh, home, and if I connect it to the grid, I become an energy supplier. So no longer there is going to be an energy supplier and consumer divide. We are talking now in the literature in terms of prosumers, the consumers who are becoming prosumer. So keeping this in mind, when we talk of affordability, what we are talking about affordability is not only about the price. How do we define affordability? Who is, I mean, do I have affordability? How do I determine that? There are two things which determines the affordability. My income and the price that I pay. So my affordability is about my market opportunity. Do I have entry to the market? And that market opportunity can increase by income generation as well as price management, which is for allocation of the resources. So from that point of view, I would think, and all the global reports, we are trying to assess that. As the countries are progressing, the income growth happening, 7% economy growth, 6% economy growth, 8% economy growth, fantastic economy growth for the developed and developing countries. That gives us the purchasing power, capacity to enter the market. So even if price goes up a little bit, our income has gone up much higher. So it does not reduce the affordability of the consumer. And consumer, what do they need? Do they eat coal? Do they drink oil? No. What they need 
is the service. We need the mobility service. We need the nutritional service. We need the um, uh, 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 illumination service. So I can be bothered about only my energy bill, not the price. And so my energy bill can go down even today, living in Dhaka, if I buy all the energy efficient appliances, five star, seven star uh, refrigerators, which are most energy efficient, I can buy the most efficient car so that I can have less, um, uh, less burden in my energy bill. So globally, we are trying to see that affordability and sustainability are not contradictory to each other. That is not going to burden the consumers if consumers are aware of their opportunities and there has to be diversification of the resources and diversification of the appliances that we should be talking for. And of course, competitiveness, price, and the government intervention in terms of different incentives do play a role for enhancing affordability. So I do not see any conflict between sustainability and affordability. And I think by following the sustainable development path, we can diversify, we can diversify the risk and it will be beneficial for the countries and the globe as a whole in the longer run. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Roy, for uh, that very very good response and very energetic response. We appreciate it. You can tell from the claps in the audience. At the heart of your discussion, there's the question about the role of the consumer and consumer rights as they think about consumption, as they think about pricing, as they think about both producing electricity and consuming it. I'd like to now turn to Dr. Shamshul Alam to say a few words about consumer rights in the energy sector. My name is Mohammad Shamsul Alam, Energy Advisor CAB and Dean of the Faculty of Engineering, Daffodil International University. Pricing tatha mullo nidharunir, that is energy pricing, orthat biddu to jalani nid, mullo nidharunir khetre, nana deshi, nana prekhite, nana nitiyo ko shul bibechona kara hai. আমাদের ক্ষেত্রে কোন কোন বিষয় কি কিভাবে বিবেচিত হওয়া দরকার তা আজও স্পষ্ট হয়নি ফলে ভোক্তারা জ্বালানি অধিকার বঞ্চিত তাই সেসব বিষয়গুলো নিয়ে কথা বলবো তবে সরকারের রাজস্ব আহরণ বৃদ্ধির লক্ষ্যে বিদ্যুতে পনেরো পার্সেন্ট ভ্যাট নির্ধারণের প্রস্তাব রয়েছে গ্যাসে এস নিয়ে বিতর্ক আছে জনগণের জ্বালানি অধিকার সাংবিধানিকভাবে মৌলিক অধিকার সে অধিকার সুরক্ষায় এনার্জি রেগুলেটরি কমিশন আইন ভোক্তা অধিকার সংরক্ষণ আইন এবং প্রতিযোগিতা আইন বিশেষভাবে উল্লেখযোগ্য এসব আইনের আওতায় প্রাতিষ্ঠানিকভাবে ভোক্তা ও জনগণের জ্বালানি অধিকার সুরক্ষা পায় তাছাড়া সংবিধানের একশো দুই ধারার আওতায় সুপ্রিম কোর্ট ও সুরক্ষা দেয় কিন্তু জ্বালানি খাত প্রশাসন স্বার্থ সংঘাত ও দুর্নীতিমুক্ত না হয় সে অধিকার এখন বিপন্ন সে যে কোনো সময়ের তুলনায় পরিকল্পনায় বিদ্যুৎ ও জ্বালানি উন্নয়ন সরকারের অধিকতর গুরুত্ব পেলেও বিদ্যুৎ ও জ্বালানি সরবরাহে অন্যায় ও অযৌক্তিক ব্যয় বৃদ্ধি নিয়ন্ত্রণহীন তাই এখাতে আর্থিক ঘাটতি বৃদ্ধি অব্যাহত মূল্য ও ভর্তুকি বৃদ্ধিতে সে ঘাটতি নিয়ন্ত্রণে আসেনি বিদ্যুৎ ও জ্বালানি সংকট কাটেনি বিদ্যমান এনার্জি প্রাইসিং পদ্ধতি মুনাফা ও সরকারের রাজস্ব বান্ধব ভোক্তা বান্ধব নয় মুনাফা রাজস্ব আহরণ মার্জিন যৌক্তিক ও ন্যায়সঙ্গত না হলে প্রাইসিং যৌক্তিক ও ন্যায়সঙ্গত হওয়া সম্ভব নয় তাছাড়া বিদ্যুৎ ও জ্বালানি সরবরাহে অন্য অযৌক্তিক ব্যয় বৃদ্ধি যৌক্তিক করা হলেই কেবল এনার্জি প্রাইসিং যৌক্তিক ও ন্যায়সঙ্গত এবং ভোক্তা স্বার্থসম্মত হতে পারে বিদ্যমান প্রেক্ষাপট পর্যালোচনায় দেখা যায় জ্বালানি তেলে আর্থিক ঘাটতি সমন্বয়ে লিটার প্রতি দশ টাকা বৃদ্ধির প্রস্তাব করা হয়েছে বছরে ষাট লক্ষ টনের বেশি জ্বালানি আমদান জ্বালানি তেল আমদানি হয় এই প্রস্তাব মধ্যে ঘাটতি ছয় হাজার কোটি টাকার অধিক যখন আন্তর্জাতিক বাজারে তেলের মূল্য ব্রেল ব্যারেল প্রতি একশো বিশ ডলার ছিল তখন আমরা লিটার প্রতি ডিজেল কিনেছি আটষট্টি টাকায় অক্টেন পেট্রোল একশো টাকায় ফার্নিসোয়েল বাষট্টি টাকায় 
আমদানি ব্যয় হার আংশিক সমন্বয় হয় এখন কিনে থাকে ডিজেল পঁয়ষট্টি টাকায় ফার্নিস অয়েল বিয়াল্লিশ টাকায় অক্টেন পেট্রোল নব্বই টাকায় বর্তমানে ব্যারেল ব্যারেল প্রতি তেলের মূল্য কম বেশি সত্তর ডলার হলে প্রস্তাবিত ঘাটতি সমন্বয়ে জ্বালানি তেলের মূল্য বৃদ্ধির প্রস্তাবের ন্যায্যতা ও যৌক্তিকতা যাচাই বাসাই সাপেক্ষ তা ব্যতীত মূল্যহার নির্ধারণে ভোক্তার অধিকার খর্ব হবে এই একই কথা এলপিজি ও এলএনজির মূল্যহার নির্ধারণের ক্ষেত্রেও সমানভাবে প্রযোজ্য বিদ্যুতের সর্বশেষ মূল্য বৃদ্ধি হয় দুই সালে সেপ্টেম্বরে তখন বিদ্যুৎ উৎপাদনে দুই হাজার সতেরো আঠারো অর্থ বছরে আর্থিক ঘাটতি সমন্বয়ে ভর্তুকি ধার্য করা হয় গণশুনানির ভিত্তিতে প্রায় চার হাজার কোটি টাকা হিসেবে দেখা যায় ওই অর্থ বছরে ঘাটতি এখন আট হাজার ছয়শো কোটি টাকা গণশুনানি এমন ব্যয় বৃদ্ধি যৌক্তিক নয় সঙ্গত হতে পারে না বিদ্যুৎ উৎপাদন বিতরণ নীতি ও কৌশল কতটা বিভ্রান্তি শিকার হলে এমন অন্যায় ও অযৌক্তিক ঘাটতির সৃষ্টি হয় যৌক্তিক করা ছাড়াই সে ঘাটতি ভর্তুকি বা মূল্যবৃদ্ধি দ্বারা সমন্বয় হলে ভোক্তা অধিকার খর্ব হবে এখানে বলা দরকার অযৌক্তিক ব্যয় বৃদ্ধির উপাদানগুলো চিহ্নিত করে ক্যাবের হিসাবে দেখানো হয় দুই হাজার পনেরো ষোলো অর্থ বছরে বিদ্যুৎ সরবরাহে অযৌক্তিক ব্যয় বৃদ্ধি পায় প্রায় তেরো হাজার কোটি টাকা তন্মধ্যে উৎপাদনে আট হাজার কোটি টাকা এই ব্যয় বৃদ্ধির হ্রাসে কৌশলগত পরিকল্পনা গ্রহণের প্রস্তাব বিআরসি ও বিদ্যুৎ বিভাগে কেউ আমলে নেয়নি ফলে ক্যাব সুপ্রিম কোর্টের হাইকোর্ট বিভাগে রিট মামলা করে মামলাটি এখন চূড়ান্ত নিষ্পত্তির অপেক্ষায় সম্প্রতি এলএনজি মিশ্রিত গ্যাসের মূল্য বৃদ্ধির প্রস্তাবের উপরে গণশুনানি হয়েছে অচির এই মূল্য বৃদ্ধির আদেশ হবে মূল্য বৃদ্ধির প্রস্তাবের ন্যায্যতা ও যৌক্তিকতা গণশুনানিতে যাচাই বাছাই হতে হয় কেবলমাত্র সঞ্চালন ও বিতরণ চার্জ বৃদ্ধি মোট সরবরাহ ব্যয়ের মাত্র তিন পারসেন্ট গণশুনানিতে যাচাই বাছাই হয়েছে শুনানিতে বিতরণ চার্জ বৃদ্ধির প্রস্তাব গৃহীত হয়নি বরং বিদ্যমান চার্জ হারে বছরে চারশো একাত্তর কোটি টাকা উদ্বৃত্ত থাকে প্রমাণিত হয়েছে দুই হাজার পনেরো সালে গণশুনানির ভিত্তিতে বিতরণ ব্যয় যৌক্তিক করা হয় ফলে দুই হাজার ষোলো ও সতেরো অর্থ বছরে বিতরণ ব্যয় সাশ্রয় হয় এক হাজার পাঁচ কোটি টাকা ভোক্তা পর্যায়ে গ্যাসের মূল্য বিতরণ ইউটিলিটি ভেদে সমতা রক্ষা করায় উদ্বৃত্ত থাকে নয়শো তিরিশ কোটি টাকা এলএনজি মিশ্রিত গ্যাসের মূল্য হার ভারিত গড়ে সাত দশমিক তিন নয় টাকা থেকে এগারো দশমিক নয় পাঁচ টাকা বৃদ্ধির প্রস্তাব করা হয় এ ব্যয় বৃদ্ধির কেবলমাত্র তিন পার্সেন্ট ব্যয় গণশুনানিতে যাচাই বাছাই ক্রমে ধার্য করা হয়েছে বাকি সাতানব্বই পার্সেন্ট কতটা যৌক্তিক ও নয় নয় সঙ্গত তা যাচাই বাছাই হয়নি গণশুনানিতে ওই সাতান্ন সাতানব্বই পার্সেন্ট ব্যয় যৌক্তিক করা ব্যতীত মূল্য বৃদ্ধি অন্যায় ও অযৌক্তিক হবে ভোক্তা অধিকার খর্ব হবে সরবরাহ ব্যয় যৌক্তিক করা ব্যতীত ক্যাবের হিসাবে এলএনজি মিশ্রিত গ্যাসের আর্থিক ঘাটতি প্রায় ছয় হাজার কোটি টাকা সরবরাহ ব্যয় যৌক্তিক করা হলে মূল্য বৃদ্ধি বা ভর্তুকি ছাড়াই এ ঘাটতি সমন্বয় হতে পারে এমন প্রস্তাব ক্যাব জ্বালানি ও খনিজ সম্পদ বিভাগ এবং বিআরসির নিকট পেশ করেছে তাছাড়া সে প্রস্তাবে গ্যাস সরবরাহে নানা ব্যয় যৌক্তিক করার লক্ষ্যে কিছু সংস্কার প্রস্তাবও রয়েছে সে বিবে সেসব বিবেচনায় না নিয়ে মূল্য ধার্য করা হলে তা ন্যায় ও যৌক্তিক হবে না ভোক্তা অধিকার খর্ব হবে গ্যাস উন্নয়ন তহবিল বিদ্যুৎ সংরক্ষণ ও রক্ষণাবেক্ষণ তহবিল জ্বালানি নিরাপত্তা তহবিল এবং সাপোর্ট ফর শর্টফল তহবিল গঠনে গঠনের লক্ষ্য অর্জন এসব তহবিলের ব্যবহার দ্বারা নিশ্চিত হয়নি এসব তহবিল এক্তিয়ার বহির্ভূত কর্তৃত্ব দ্বারা পরিচালিত এবং নানা অনিয়মের অভিযোগে অভিযুক্ত তাছাড়া ক্রয় চুক্তি বেআইনিভাবে পরিবর্তন করে ব্যক্তি খাত বিদ্যুৎ ক্রয় করায় ভক্তারা বছরে শত শত কোটি টাকার ক্ষতি শিকার হচ্ছে এসব অভিযোগ বিরোধ হিসেবে নিষ্পত্তির জন্য ক্যাব বিআরসিতে আবেদন করেছে এবং মন্ত্রণালয়ে নজরে এনেছে এসব অভিযোগ আইনানুগ নিষ্পত্তি ব্যতীত মূল্য নির্ধারণ ন্যায্য যৌক্তিক হয় না ভোক্তা অধিকার খর্ব হয় মূল্যহার নির্ধারণে পাইকারি বিদ্যুতের ক্ষেত্রে ইউটিলিটিদের মধ্যে এবং খুচরা বিদ্যুতের ক্ষেত্রে ভোক্তাদের মধ্যে সমতা রক্ষার নীতি অনুসরণ করা হয়ে থাকে যা নবায়নযোগ্য বিদ্যুতে হয় না ফলে অপগ্রিড এলাকায় ভোক্তারা চরম মূল্যহার বৈষম্যের শিকার সৌর বিদ্যুৎ মাসিক একশো বিশ টাকা সার্ভিস চার্জ সহ তিরিশ টাকা মূল্য হারে ভোক্তারা ব্যবহার করে প্রান্তিক গ্রাহক সে সুরক্ষা পায় না অথচ প্রান্তিক আবাসিক গ্রাহক গ্রিড বিদ্যুৎ মাসে পঁচিশ টাকা ডিমান্ড চার্জ সহ ইউটিলিটি বেদে তিন টাকা পঞ্চাশ পয়সা থেকে তিন টাকা আশি পয়সা মূল্য হারে গ্রিড বিদ্যুৎ পায় 
গ্রিড ও আপগ্রিড বিদ্যুৎ ব্যবহারকারী ভোক্তাদের মূল্যহারে সমতা নিশ্চিত করা ব্যতীত মূল্য নির্ধারণ ন্যায্য যুক্তি হয় না ভোক্তা অধিকার খর্ব হয় দেখার বিষয় মূল্যহার এক পয়সা কম বেশি হলে ভোক্তাদের দিতে হয় কম বেশি বছরে বিদ্যুতে ষাট কোটি টাকা গ্যাসে একত্রিশ কোটি টাকা মূল্যহার এক টাকা কম বেশি হলে তেলে দিতে হয় কম বেশি ছশ কোটি টাকা সবার উপরে মানুষ সত্য তার উপরে নাই এ সত্য স্থান কালো জাতি ধর্ম নির্বিশেষে যেমন অক্ষয় ও অব্যয় আবার সঠিক দামি মানে ও মাপে বিদ্যুৎ ও জ্বালানি সেবা পায় এবং তার দাম ও মান মাপ যথাযথভাবে যাচাই করা ভোক্তার মৌলিক অধিকার এ সত্য তেমন অক্ষয় ও অব্যয় কোনো অজুহাতে এ অধিকার থেকে ভোক্তাকে বঞ্চিত করা যায় না তাই সে অধিকার সুরক্ষা ব্যতীত বিদ্যুৎ ও জ্বালানির মূল্যহার ধার্য করা অন্যায় ও অযৌক্তিক এবং ভোক্তার অধিকার খর্ব করার সামিল আমরা এমন কাজ কোনোভাবেই করতে পারি না ধন্যবাদ থ্যাংক ইউ ভেরি মাচ অ্যাট দ্য হার্ট অফ প্রাইসিং অ্যাপ্রোপ্রিয়েটলি টু ব্যালেন্স দ্য নিডস অফ দি এক্স চেকার অ্যান্ড দ্য নিডস অফ কনজিউমার্স is the decision about what fuel source is brought into the country, what policies surround the choice of fuel source pricing. And with that in mind, I would like to invite the chairman of Petro Bangla to offer his point of view on how the government is thinking about policy pricing given regards to the new fuel sources. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Abul Masoof Faizullah, Chairman Petro Bangla. Uh, thank you very much for the question made to me. As the LNG is being dealt by Petro Bangla, where I've been working as chairman. Before being moved on the answer that you have made on me, I would like to borrow a sentence which was uttered at the prelude by the keynote speaker. Energy is needed for everybody. Yes. From the day first, when the civilization has started, and until today, in this modern world, Energy's necessity is inevitable. No one can avoid or there is no dearth of confusion with regard to the necessity of energy. So quite obviously, the primary objective of the government, as this government is a democratic government, is to see or uphold the interest of the consumers of all levels. Gas, it is the primary energy. Quite importantly, quite obviously, Petro Bangla holds its entire responsibility to support the energy sector of our country, Bangladesh. Until today, we were totally dependent upon the gas that we do explode from the nature, but the way we have consumed the gas, the way we use this energy, this has been within a few years would start, would embrace a depleting trend. That's why our government has decided very meticulously, very carefully importing gas from external sources. So now at this moment, we cannot just say the gas that we have been producing, that could be given to different levels of customers or users in a price which might not be even acceptable or which might incur losses to Petro Bangla. My dear audience present here, 
I would like to share an example with you all here. Petro Bangla, by its companies, the amount of gas produced, it is 2,700 million cubic feet per day. But it is not enough. We need around, with, this, with the existing connectivity, about 3,300 million cubic feet. But the price which have been applied upon different levels of customers, it is incurring a loss to Petro Bangla every day, 5 crore 13 lakhs taka, which amounts at 1950 crores in every year. Definitely no one wants to see Petro Bangla's once in a dead position. So when LNG is injecting into our natural, in, into our gas, into our gas grid, quite naturally, we have to take a situation where Petro Bangla can survive. At the same time, our, the most fundamental objective, which has also been reflected in the Energy Act, as well as in line with the goal seven of SDG, that is, we have to provide energy for each and everybody. That's why Honorable Prime Minister has only instructed Petro Bangla, as well as our ministry, to withdraw the SD bats or other duties, except only 50% of the bat, which would be included only after the injection of LNG into our natural system. So our primary policy, as the moderator has asked, is to, is to keep the LNG price, that is our blended price of gas, within the affordable limit of the consumers of different categories. We have to see first their interest, we have to uphold their interest, then we can in future, gradually in different slabs, will adjust the price. Right at this moment, we have been injecting gas into our natural system. Every day for the terminal that you have been operating by an American company, we have to pay $232,000, which is fixed. If I take 100 million or 500 million, that is not the question. Question is that we have to pay $232,000 uh, every, every day. So we have to keep in our consideration that is the price which is going to be fixed by the government, uh, by BRC. Definitely they will listen to the recommendation of the Petro Bangla. At the same time, the interest of the people of our country. I'm not there to say anything, or we don't have that sort of mentality to, 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 to uh, uh, not to uphold the interest of the general consumers. The, the person or the organization which always stands beside the interest of the general consumers is cab. And definitely, Professor Shamsul Alam, who is sitting just beside me, he would not put his ogle eyes on me if I say anything against the interest of the general people. Definitely not. I say it at the beginning, we are for the benefit of the general people, for the benefit of the general consumers, entrepreneurs, industrialists, as well as the bulk consumers, those who were producing power, fertilizers, and other very important things for the welfare of the country. We agree, yes, it is needed. We are on the track of transforming our country into a middle-income country. Meanwhile, we have tested the lowest tier of the middle-income country. But in order to achieve the fulfillment or to fulfill the status of the middle-income country, we have to take 
our industrial sector's growth in, at the rate of more than 12 or 13 percent, and their industrial growth contribution to the GDP would need to take at the rate of 32 percent. Right at this moment, industry's contribution, industrial sector's contribution on GDP is now 29.2 percent. We don't have enough time in hand, so quite naturally, within a couple of years, we are to, that is, take aggressive industrial growth. For this purpose, LNG would definitely serve the in the, uh, serve the uh, entrepreneurs, uh, those who would like to take more investment into our country, Bangladesh. And for that purpose, Petro Bangla has been working. And at the same time, Petro Bangla has made recommendations to the VRC in order to take the thing in such a way that could be affordable to the general consumers and that could also make the Petro Bangla sustainable in order to serve the nation in its best way. For, as well as for the welfare of our country, Bangladesh. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'd now like to turn to the chairman of BPC. Perhaps you have a few thoughts, given the portfolio that you have. Uh, thank you very much. <coughs> this is Akram al Hussein, chairman, Bangladesh Petroleum Corporation and secretary in charge of the government of Bangladesh. Uh, BPC is mandated to import and maintain a smooth supply of the petroleum products in every region of the country. And we have that mechanism and distribution system in every region to a smooth supply of the petroleum products. If you remember that there is no single uh, incidence that BPC has failed to supply the petroleum products since its inception. So pricing of the petroleum product is very sensitive, complicated, very unpopular, <laughs> and I think uh, politically and economically is very uh, important issues. Actually, BPC is now selling the petroleum products which has been fixed by the government. BPC imports the petroleum products from different countries at the international prices. You know, the prices of fuel is every day changing. Every day. Sometimes it rises, sometimes it reduces. But BPC has no authority to fix the price of the petroleum products. We are selling the price, we are supplying the supplying the fuel to the people and the other stakeholders as the price has been fixed by the government. But many countries like India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Philippines and other developed countries, they follow the, inter they follow the international uh, prices. We are following the fixed price, but they follow the, the floating price of the a fuel price. Every day, the price of the fuel is changing. If I consider the price of the, how the price is uh, determined of a product, the, there are many components. The production cost, then add government VAT tax and income tax, and then the distribution cost and the margin, and final, the risk cost of the product. It total of the um, this cost uh, may, uh, maintain the cost of the price. If I consider this formula of the uh, pricing formula of the product, then I can uh, say that the, what should be the pricing of the uh, petroleum petroleum products. 
So in this case, the petroleum products prices should be, de should be determined on the basis of the international price rate. For example, we import 70, 70 lakh metric ton petroleum products every year. And we import 5.5 million metric ton diesel for Bangladesh. So if I consider the price of the diesel, so the yesterday, the one liter, according to flood, one liter diesel price was 49.45 BDD. And then if I add the VAT duty and income tax of the government, it is 12.06 BDT. And handling and other cost is 3.71 BDT. Total is 73.54 BDT per liter diesel cost. But BPC is selling at the rate of 65 taka. So every day, BPC, BPC is incurred loss per liter fuel is 8.54 taka. So if I calculate it in the 5.5 million metric ton, so it will stand 8.5 billion BDT in 2017 and 18 financial year. So how BPC will sustainable? How BPC will sustain? So I think we should think about the pricing of the petroleum product. I think uh, we have to uh, adopt, if, if I want to adopt this floating rate of prices, then we have to adopt, we have to adopt it uh, phase by phase. First we have to prepare our people, we have to awareness build, need awareness building, and then we have, we now, we can uh, introduce this system uh, phase by phase. So I think if we can go to the international rate, uh, for example, India and other, other kind of like, like India and other countries, then I think PC will, will um, uh, reduce its losses and as well as um, we can, um, the price will up, the price of the commodity, price of the uh, petroleum product will rise and when the price will reduce, then price also, uh, price of the commodity or uh, fuel will be reduced. So I think um, this formula can be um, applied phase by phase. Thank you very much. The topic of pricing is a very sensitive one. It is fraught with trade-offs. It is intended to deliver affordable, accessible electricity to the consumer, to protect consumer rights, to enable industry to develop. At the heart of this crossroads sits the chairman of BPDP whose role is to provide efficient, accessible electricity, to manage the books so that subsidization does not balloon. So perhaps, sir, you can start by explaining your role and how you see managing the different challenges that you have as the single buyer. Thank you, Jarif. This is Khalid Mahmood, Chairman of Bangladesh Power Development Board. Actually, factors, if we consider influencing the prices of electricity calculation worldwide, we have to consider three points, basically. Electricity price usually depends, depends on the uh, construction, financing, maintenance, and, and the uh, financial terms and condition. Number two, fuel. Fuel plays a very vital role for the electricity pricing. Uh, and last one is weather conditions. Rain provides water from low-cost hydropower generation. Uh, wind can provide low-cost electricity generation from wind turbines when wind speed are favorable. However, extreme temperature can increase the...
especially for heat wave and the demand can drive price up. Regulation commissions regulate the prices. Present electricity demand and generation. Actually, in our country, due to the shortage of gas fuel, some gas-based power plants are unable to generate power at their rated capacity, so that liquid fuel-based generation increases. However, from the upcoming years, uh, plan period, liquid fuel based generation will go down and gas or LNG, coal based and imported based power generation will increase. Present electricity pricing and financial laws. Because as a single buyer, we are not feeling comfortable the pricing given to us from the BRC. You see, uh, it is mentioned in the uh, financial year 2010, liquid fuel based generation was 5% only, and gas generation was 89%. So the bulk supply was at that time 2.60 taka per kilowatt. To meet this demand, the power supply in terms of net generation has increased by 114% from 2019 to 2017 18. Fuel wise, actually, generation was uh, gas 62%, liquid fuel 25%, coal 3%, imported 8%, and hydro 2%. But the BRC estimated fuel wise generation was gas 66%, liquid fuel 22%, coal 2%, import 8%, and hydro 1%. As per the BRC recommendation 2017-18, Regulated bulk supply cost was 5.44 taka per kilowatt hour, and the bulk selling tariff was 4.84 taka per kilowatt hour. The gap between supply cost and bulk tariff was 0.60 taka per kilowatt hour. It means the financial loss was 0.60 taka per kilowatt hour. This loss was recovered from the government as grant from December 2017. Only in the year of so far 2017 and 18, we received the money from the government as a grant. But from where we are getting the, this amount, the compensation, uh, till now, before, except 17, 18, the total amount was 41,000 crore taka. Government is giving this taka as a loan with 3% interest. So, it has, we are not giving the money, that for sure, because we have, not, we have no capability, but it has a very bad impact on our balance sheet, Mr. Jarif, you know better than me, probably. However, uh, we have to, we are always committed to provide the uninterrupted power to the consumer as their requirement. Ultimately, due to shortage of gas supply for gas-based power plants, dual fuel based power plants, were run by diesel, mainly Chittagong and Khulna area. As well as furnace oil based power generation was increased. On the other hand, the uh, NLDC have requested PDB to improve voltage problem by running uh, liquid fuel based power plants, especially in Khulna, Rangpur, and Saitpur area. But to improve the voltage and other, other things as a single buyer, this is not my scope of work. I think the distribution and transmission entities to take care of it. BRC also requested us to a total of 140 megawatt diesel, Bharamara 60 megawatt, Seth put 20 megawatt, Rank put 20 megawatt, and Burshal 40 megawatt based very old power plant and need to be retired. We're supposed to retire by this time, but due to the shortage of coal in the, in the northern zone, uh, we are compelled to run that machine without the whole area should be in the black. However, of course, we have to consider the uncertainty of international oil prices, also the inflation of Bangladesh Taka against the US dollar. If we consider those issues, Actual bulk supply cost was 6.25 taka per kilowatt. Bulk selling tariff was 4.82 taka per kilowatt. In addition, the compensation given by the BRC, now we are giving more 0.83 taka per kilowatt hour. From December 2017 to June 2018, 
the total loss was taka two, 2,786 crore taka to BBDB. Out of this loss, about taka 1,950 crore loss were due to run Shikol Baha 150 megawatt and 225 megawatt power plant by diesel. As a single buyer, still PDB is giving the money in time. The resulting financial loss have created substantial pressure on the BBDB budget for the payment of purchase of electricity and liquid fuel of BPC. What will be the future electricity demand and generation? Gas is a very important factor for us. Right at the moment, the gas-based generation costs about 2.80 2, 2 per kilowatt hour. But we know the LNG will come very soon. Uh, when the LNG will be available, the current gas price will probably be um, uh, probably be adjusted. There should be reasonable tariff adjustment, but any rapid increase in LNG prices and increasing shortage will pose a great challenge in gas pricing that will affect the electricity price. Moreover, gas price, tax, VAT, etc., have adverse effect on the price. Coal is another option due to the shortage of supply. Now we are facing Barbukria power plant are not in operation and the reserve, they give the indication if we import the coal and prices increase, then the generation cost of these plants will be varied. There are large number of imported coal based capacity are in pipeline stage. The, uh, the plants will be commissioned in phases. I request everybody be careful about the import of coal. It should be reasonable, otherwise tariff will be increased. Another important thing is reasonable uh, regional energy trade. At present, we are importing 660 megawatt capacity based power uh, is imported from India. As per the plan, about 2,500 megawatt will be imported from neighboring countries during the period of 2018 to 2022. Uh, as we know, Bangladesh recently signed a memorandum of understanding with Nepal to cooperate each other in power sector. The agreement is expected to facilitate increasing cooperation in power exchange, power trading, grid line connection, hydropower development, and uh, renewable energy extension between the two countries. Apart from this, uh, BIMSTEC, recently the agreed of MEU for establishing of the BIMSTEC grid interconnection will cooperate towards the implementation of grid interconnections for the trade in elect electricity with a view of promote, promoting national and optimum power transmission in the BIMSTEC region. Grid interconnection among the BIMSTEC member states will need to be established. One more thing, how much power will be imported from neighboring countries. This is issue need to be discussed. As our keynote speaker mentioned, in the PSMP it is mentioned 5%, I think it is not right. As per the PMC, um, uh, PSMP 16, uh, the cross-border trade shall not exceed 15% of the total generation capacity. Import power of any single point, as well as through from any single country shall not exceed 10% of the generated power. Also, surplus power in lean season may be exported to the neighboring countries, maintaining the reserve margin. This was the recommended in the PSMP 2016. Renewable energy, power generation based on renewable uh, resources has to be increased to reduce the dependence on fossil fuel in order to conserve environment. We are aware of the grid stability. If we connect the solar power to the grid, grid stability is one of the challenges. Rationalization of electricity pricing. What Dr. Joy Sri Rai. She very clearly mentioned, we have to give a stress on the primary fuel. I do agree with her. At a time, we need to reduce the growing demand by proper demand sign management. Now, global issue is savings of energy, saving of primary fuel, and also saving environment. 
at, and at a time, one watt saved means one watt generated without burning of fossil fuel. Our keynote speaker mentioned one thing, that is LPG, regarding the LPG fuel. But we received some LP, LPG fuel related power station, but globally we see there is no track record to run the power plants by the uh, LPG. It, it acts as a primary fuel. Then again we have to come to the liquid fuel based power plant and L, LPG based power plant that is run by the normally diesel. So again the cost will be increased. From 2009 to 2018, about 12 million US dollar has been invested for power generation. Also, on an average, about 6 billion US dollar will be required each year for investment in the generation sector. There is a big challenge to ensure this investment on time. Ultimately, it will affect power generation cost. BRC needs to play an important role for time-to-time -time tariff adjustment considering international fuel price and other things, those are related with energy pricing. So the challenge for proper pricing of energy will be sustainable. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. As my late uncle, who was a lawyer, once told me, there is no certainty in life other than death, taxes, and the increase in power prices. I will now call upon the member of BERC to offer his perspective on power prices. Thank you, Zarif. Uh, my name is uh, Mizanur Rahman. Uh, I am now working as a member in Bangladesh Energy Regulatory Commission. Uh, good morning. You know that cost of primary fuel has a major impact on electricity pricing. With present uh, fuel mix, fuel cost is almost uh, 60 to 65 percent of the total electricity production cost. So low cost primary fuel is very, very important for price stability and sustainability of the electricity sector in Bangladesh. You can remember in uh, 2010, electricity generation from uh, natural gas was uh, almost 90%. And electricity generation from liquid fuel was uh, only 5%. Now in 2018, generation from uh, natural gas uh, has come down to 60%. And electricity from a liquid fuel has uh, increased from 5% to 25%. Again, the cost of uh, natural gas was $1 per MMBTU at that time in 2010. Uh, now it is almost same, slightly more than $1 per MMBTU. But liquid fuel cost, say uh, uh, diesel cost was $15 per MMBTU at that time. Now it is... Uh, uh, $23, $24 per MMBTU. So, uh, you see that uh, uh, the fuel consumptions, the liquid fuel consumption has increased substantially and the price of liquid fuel has increased uh, uh, substantially. So that's why with these two effects, the overall cost of electricity has uh, increased significantly. As a result, uh, you can see that uh, electricity tariff uh, was uh, increased almost double. And government has to provide huge budgetary support to this sector. Now the transition period is over. What will happen in future when generation capacity requirement will be uh, 40,000 by 2030? and 60,000 by 2041. Uh, we are really scared if dependence on liquid fuel is continuing. You know that uh, oil cost, liquid fuel cost is, is high, and market is highly volatile. We must think seriously how we can get low cost primary fuel for power generation in future. Coal is the near-term option, whether it is from uh, domestic source or, or import.
but local environment should be protected at any cost. Natural gas, extensive exploration is required in onshore and offshore areas so that we can get low-cost primary fuel for power generation. Cross-border power, cost is competitive. Nuclear power, not the conventional one. Next generation, generation four, small modular reactor. Those could be highly safe and cost might be competitive in future. Renewable energy, particularly solar power in Bangladesh. Uh, at present, we are facing some problems with utility scale uh, renewable uh, solar power because of the land scarcity. Uh, but uh, you can see that uh, panel cost has come down significantly. Uh, but still, cost of renewable energy in Bangladesh is high. Uh, but if there is any breakthrough in renewable energy, like uh, efficiency can improve from present 20% to 60% uh, 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 even. And if there is a breakthrough in battery technology, by this time a lot uh, changed in the battery technology. So with this panel cost down, with uh, 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 with efficiency improvement, uh, with the better technologies, with the storage facilities, why not? Renewable energy might be the major source uh, 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 in the next decades. So uh, we must monitor, or we should we should keep an eye on the development of next generation uh, nuclear power and renewable energy to get electricity at affordable price at uh, and electricity uh, sustain, sustainability of the sector and to protect uh, and to uh, protect the climate change also so finally I, I would like to say that uh, investment decision uh, should be taken carefully considering the appropriate technology and availability of primary fuel to provide electricity to the people at an affordable price thank you thank you very much Thank you very much. I must admit that um, with the introduction of technology, I've been receiving uh, questions from the audience on my phone. What I'd like to do with permission is at this time um, ask for a few audience questions. Over the course of the next 10 minutes, we will take two to three questions in addition to the ones I've received, and then we will try to answer them among the panel members. Can we actually have uh, mics passed out? Perhaps to the gentleman uh, over there. Okay. If you can please introduce yourself before the question. Uh, I'm Engineer Salek. Uh, almost 15 years from now, I was on the other side of the table, but I am now working in Monash University, Melbourne, as uh, one of their project officer, and I have opportunity to offer training to many of the Bangladeshis there. Uh, my question, actually I have not, uh, the opportunity, didn't have the opportunity to listen to the keynote speech, but rest of them I have listened. I can intercept some of the uh, questions raised by Professor Shamsul Alam, but my first question will be to the PDB chairman. In 2010, government introduced Speedy Power and uh, Energy Generation Act as a crisis management short-term option. Now, as per the statement of the Prime Minister, yesterday we celebrated the generation capacity of 20,000 megawatt. Are we in a crisis to keep that act going? The second question is, again, as crisis management option, we opted for liquid fuel power generation. I won't say it rental or quick rental. This is peak shaving option. So, but we are still continuing. Of your power generation, about 44,000 megawatt is liquid fuel now. Are we still in a crisis? Okay. These are the two questions. Great, thank okay. you. We will continue with questions. Please try to limit your question to one, so it's easier for the uh, panelists to respond. We have a question to the left here. I hope it is not a response also, but uh, 
Oh, it's a response. Okay. Um, should we take um, one? I, I apologize. Can we get some mics to the left here, please? Thank you very much. Okay, please introduce yourself and ask the question. Uh, myself, uh, Mohammad Shahid Sarwar. I'm the managing director of Dhaka Electric Supply Company, Desco. My question goes to um, Mr. Mijanur Rahman, the member uh, Bark. As we all know that the uh, electricity tariff is set by Bark in Bangladesh, and normally it is revised after a certain period of time. Our last revision was done in uh, December last year, uh, December 17. And in that, as, as a utility head, that's a Desco, in Dhaka city, the electricity is distributed by the two companies, that is the Desco and DPDC, Dhaka Power Distribution uh, Company. So, so long, the bulk price for these two companies was same. I, if I buy from PDB, in the same rate we used to buy it. But in the last revision, there is a difference because I buy the electricity by 14 paisa more than DPDC. Now, my question is, the, what is the justification? Because the category of the consumers is same, the two are the government company, rather additionally, my company is a listed company, I have to give the share, in the, my share is in the market, and more so, 75% share is held by the government, that means PDB, from whom I am buying the power, I am giving him the bonus share at the end of the year. Now, what is the justification of uh, giving uh, my, my price, the, my buying price, more than the other company who is also dealing with the similar categories of the consumers? Thank you. Thank you very much. We will take a few more questions before I summarize. Uh, to the gentleman in the blue jacket in the back, Question. Gentleman in the blue jacket in the back, please. Yes, please introduce yourself and uh, limit yourself to one question. Uh, I'm Saddam Hussein. I'm a student of energy economics. Uh, I, I'm just uh, asking that uh, in all our um, conversation, we, we, uh, just, uh, we got that it seems like uh, we are less interested about our primary energy development, uh, domestic uh, development, domestic energy resource exploration. Uh, rather than we are putting uh, our full attention in imported LNG, it's okay LNG is uh, needed in these circumstances, but uh, aren't, uh, are we offering proper attention to our domestic natural gas exploration. This is my first question. Uh, another question I'll... No, 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 I apologize. Please, uh, one, sir, one sir, question. Please, one minute. Just, just one, one question. Just, what is the definition of affordability? That uh, our uh, Petrobras chairman, chairman, sir, just said that uh, uh, they are trying uh, to pricing affordable price. But is it affordable that seven taka per unit gas to uh, 11 taka in, uh, in just uh, one month, isn't it going to be a, a burden to our uh, general people? Uh, this, is my second, uh, this is my second question. Uh, that, that's all, and if you permit me, what is the role of BARC to pricing liquid petroleum? Uh, as our BARC Act 2003 clearly mandated that uh, uh, the liquid petroleum pricing will go to the authority under BARC, but why still it uh, is uh, dominated by uh, other organ? Uh, that's all, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, young man, you clearly have a career in politics as your three questions become uh, rather long and they're rather complicated. However, we'll try to answer one or two of them. I want to summarize the questions. There will be no more questions. There may be some responses from the audience. But I would like to summarize the questions received and then point to the audience, to the panel members. One of the questions received um, by uh, email was how does the private sector play a more important role 
in energy pricing and energy consumption. I'd like uh, the honorable keynote speaker to respond to that in one minute, please. Followed by that, I do uh, encourage the BPDP chairman to respond to the notion of policy in general. I would not specifically suggest a discussion on the Speedy Power Act, but policy in general to balance the needs of demand and supply. So the role of policy, please, if you wouldn't mind. The third response I would like would be around the notion of domestic energy versus importing. I would suggest uh, we get an answer there. Um, and finally, I'd like the uh, chairman of the session to give some concluding remarks. Is that okay? We can take more questions off stage if people have an interest, but why don't we first start with the role of the private sector, please? Thank you. Um, could you be a little bit more specific about the question itself again? Because it's a bit yes, the question was, you mentioned that the private sector has an increasingly important role mm -hmm. to play in pricing. So the question was, what's the role of the private sector? Uh, ultimately, it's the private sector which pays for the cost of energy. So they should have an important role. The issue is that how that role will be manifested in the operation of the pricing mechanism. Uh, it is a natural monopoly, we know that. So that's why BARC comes in, and the BARC has to give proper audience to the consumers, and the associations of consumers, business community, or the industrialists, groups, and so on. So it is the responsibility of the BARC to give due attention to the consumer's concern about the pricing policy. The industry's concern about the pricing policy, like DESCO and other issues, and explicitly discuss those so that people can understand the rationale behind setting the prices. There should not be any opaqueness in that discussion and deliberations. All aspects should be reflected, should be summarized like a judgment. Why? Park has come to that conclusion, no behind the scene, so that consumers, industries, all the users of the power and, and other energy products knows why they are paying that price and what is the outlook for their payment in future as well. Because one of the concerns for industry is that what's going to happen three years down the line? Am I going to be wiped out by the price increases? I want to know now before I make my investment. So, this is a responsibility of the government and empower the bark and keep and empower them with both capacity building as well as with the legal authority and, 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 and using that legal authority properly so that consumers, users are really informed about their concerns and the reflection of their concern in the pricing policy and what is in the outlook for the coming years. Thank you. Thank you very much. In other markets, Consumer advocacy, consumer engagement, private sector dialogue is critical. But in that lies the requirement for the private sector and consumers to take ownership and accountability for their own consumption as well. Bills are broken up so you can understand what the usage of power has been. The private sector is indicated when power is expensive versus not. So you're right. There's quite a bit of dialogue that's required. The second question I'd like to go to is to the chairman of BPDP. And this is on the role of policy. You may speak to the specific questions about the Speedy Power Act, but I suggest you broaden a little bit to just talk about regulation and how you balance regulation to deliver what you need. And if there's a response from the audience, that's fine as well. So you, you mentioned that um, we have to give answer regarding demand and supply. As I mentioned, uh, as I mentioned earlier, so um, we need to reduce the growing demand by proper demand side management. This is very important. More, moreover, one more thing, that is, um, there are two types of peak demand. One is 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. and the evening peak, 7.30 to 10 p.m. So this time, only for this, uh, this time, base load power plant cannot run. That's why we are using the, some picking power plants, either gas or liquid, liquid fuel. So if we want to do it, what? Dr. Joyce tell we have to go for the primary fuel, saving the primary fuel. Then we can achieve our goal. At the same time, I want to say what Mr. Salek Supi asked uh, to know something from me. The 
previous contract, we increased it for, a, for one year or two years. As you know, the coal power plant, uh, which we are expected to come, but it is unfortunately, it is a little bit delayed. That's why we increased the tenure of the, uh, for those contracts, few contracts, after huge negotiation. And secondly, we, we already provided uh, some well-based power plant. You know, um, there are some voltage problems in, uh, in some area, and our generation is not actually area-based. That's why we give few power plants to mitigate that voltage problem. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to go to the third question with regards to domestic uh, resources. If the chairman of uh, Petro Bangla could please respond. Uh, thank you very much for the question on me. I would like to ask a question to the, to the person who raised the question on me. What do you want? The gas with no gas in cheaper price or less gas in cheaper price or more gas in a rel relatively higher price? Which one is important? Um, we need more, more, more energy, more gas. Yes. Ah. I do agree. Yes. I do agree. Yes. The price that you have mentioned, this price is applicable for the industrial sector. Yes. For the industrial sector, we have been incurring a loss of taka. We are increasing double, almost double in one day. This is a burden, I think. Wait, so. wait, wait. I will, I will answer you. Sir, I, would, I would encourage you We to are respond, incurring right? a loss of 30 paisa for each and every unit of gas that we have been providing in the industrial sector and 17% of our gas that we have been supplying in the industrial sector. Yes, sector. Yes, yes. But, the, but the information you do have is not correct. Okay. Uh, but I, I mean, think you are misinformed. Are government has, government, let me finish then you can answer. Uh, sir, in last bark uh, hearing we got to know that 7 taka per meter cube, just wait it. Uh, or going to 11 taka. That's, I just asked this question for uh, just uh, if we do it uh, in sequential, uh, step by step, then. Okay, it let me help you. Less. Let me help you. Let me help you. Have you seen any gadget? No, no. no. So. Who is gadget, sir? So that is about a new pricing, new tariff? No, no, no. It's still not. Bark I haven't yet. Uh, any, uh, yes, okay. Any verdict. Okay. The news. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Then the, still, news that, the news that has been murmuring on you, it is still floating in the air. Yes, yes. It is not at all a fact. Okay, okay. Then. Let's okay. see the gadget. Yes, sir. Yes, Let's sir. see the tariff. Yes. Sir. Which has been given by the bark later. Then we can answer on the question that you have given to us. Thank you. Thank you okay, very much. Thank you. And I would like to answer on your second question. Yes, our first objective is to explore our own resources. Yes, sir. Yes, then we can be. step forward to see that is whether we can bring any gas from external sources. First to explore our own resources. That's why under the vision 2021, we have taken a massive program. That is 108 wells will be drilled yes, sir. by 2021. And it is a very aggressive initiative of government which would be implemented by Petro Bangla gradually. And we are undertaking at present by December 19 will be undertaking about 21 drilling, which will be both in onshore as well as on offshore. So you, you, you must not be uh, frustrated with the 
um, with the news that you do have in hand right now. I think you got your answer. Thank you very much. Thank you. How about a round of applause for that dialogue? Huh? Thank you very much. Okay. At this point, I'd like to hand it over to the chairman of this session to say a few closing remarks. Would you like to ask a question, sir? Yes, yes. No more questions. Ah. Okay, I apologize. There's, there's a request for an answer to the one question that was asked before the chairman's comments. I apologize. This is to the uh, member, sir. Please respond. Please, please do keep it. Uh... Uh, thank you very much for this question. Uh, actually, you know that uh, uh, retail tariff is the same for the all uh, distribution companies. And that is a government policy that uh, uh, there should be uniform retail tariff. That's why the bulk tariff, we have to adjust in the bulk tariff to make the same uniform retail tariff. And uh, but you know that uh, a bulk tariff for REB is, is uh, much lower and it is uh, uh, higher for uh, DPDC and DESCO. And uh, the important thing is Bulk tariff is a completely pass-through item. So you should not have any headache on, on the bulk tariff. There is a pass-through item. You can raise questions with the distribution cost. So far I can remember that your distribution cost is, is, is uh, lowest among the all uh, uh, companies. And as you said that uh, your company is listed company, that's why your rate of return is higher than other uh, utilities. Thank you very much. I'd now like to request the chairman to make his final remarks. Uh, thank you. The price of uh, energy has been a major topic of conversation in the energy world. There are uh, many disc dialogue, consultations, committee meeting, and third-word discussions for fixing energy price all over the world. Uh, in fact, energy price touches all wheels of uh, industries, trade and commerce. This is why uh, government and business uh, throughout the world are always cautiously steps into energy pricing. Uh, as um, Bangladesh economy is growing and as because of industrialization and vast economic activities, the demand for energy is also increasing. Uh, currently, our local gas production is uh, 2,750 mm CFD, but our demand is uh, much, much higher than that. Uh, also, uh, gas is the main source of fuel of uh, power production. So, government uh, decided to import LNG. Uh, but uh, for imported high-cost LNG, we have domestic price challenges. Already we have seen the debate. If we want uh, energy, we will have to pay. Which one is uh, good or better or best? low or less energy uh, with l less cost, more energy with a higher cost, which one is good for the industry, uh, it is to be decided. And uh, I think, but we think we should make a balance between these two, demand of energy and pricing. Uh, financing LNG, we need price regulation and the difficulty of um, passing the cost of the international LNG prices to downstream consumer is a challenge. Energy pricing also should consider the purchase capacity of the end users. The end users or the consumer's ability to pay should be a determining factor in energy pricing. 
and the consumer's ability to pay depends on the overall economy of the country. If the economy of the country uh, goes off, the purchase capacity of the consumer goes up, then the ability to pay for the energy will obviously uh, go up. But uh, the developing economies need some breathing space to cope with the energy pricing. Need to support the entrepreneurs and the economy as well. So energy price support from government is a must and government is continuing this support and continuously providing this support. But still, it is very difficult to satisfy the end user or the consumers. Price support in energy is not a loss at all, I think, because the price support generates many other income and opportunities in the economy. More industrialization will surely bring more capital flow, more machineries will be placed in economy, production will increase, and increased production ultimately generates income generation, employment, and economy will accrue more VAT and tax. Uh, now, with these few words, I would like to conclude here. And I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to the keynote speaker, Mr. Ahsan Mansoor, for his informative and brilliant keynote speech. Special thanks to moderator Jerif Munir for conducting, for conducting the discussion in a very efficient way. Uh, thanks to all the panel members for their valuable comments and inputs. Finally, many, many thanks to you, ladies and gentlemen, for your active participation and support. Thank you very much. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for this seminar. Before we leave, a word from our sponsors. Did you want to say a few words, Dr. Kaukas? Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. This concludes the last panel of the day. Uh, we hope you will enjoy the rest of the day, and thank you for attending. Now I would like to request our moderator, Mr. Zarif Moni, to give our honorable chairperson a token of appreciation.